Hello there everyone, I am Pino back for another Kerbal Space Program tutorial. Last time we built this baby, the basic Minmus flying rover, and we are going to now be uh, explaining and building a space crane. So, uh, what a space crane is, is as I mentioned briefly last episode, it takes things from orbit and puts them down on the surface of the planet. Um, and yeah, that's basically all it's designed to do. So what we're going to do is uh, find one of these fuel tanks right here. Place it right there. This is going to be the center area of our space crane. Now, the keys when building a space crane are it has to be able to land on whatever surface you want it to land on. Uh, it has to be able to dock to other craft. So in this case, this rover here. And... Uh, so we're having the big docking port on the bottom where it's going to attach to things. These girder segments are going to go out and connect to fuel tanks, which we will put out here. There we go. Oh, we should, yeah, we have angle snap on for these. Do we want it? Yeah, okay. Just like that. There we go. In fact, let's bring these down lower. And the reason we're going to want them to be lower is because ideally this thing would land on its own. Now, that may not happen with these. Let's try these. There we go. Okay. So we got that, and let's put on some engines. We are going to want these swivel engines, I think. You could probably on Minmus get away with using the terriers, but we're going to try for the swivels. Um, and then we have to make sure to put a fuel duct from the inner tank out here to the outer ones. So there we go, that is the basic body of your space crane. So these engines will fire, and uh, you can see, obviously, how you would land this. You land this, then you undock. But the thing is, we need landing legs that we know will reach the ground. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to hold shift here, and point these down a bit like this. And then what I'm going to do is find a landing leg, put it on here, um, point it the right direction by pressing apparently A and D, and then shift, and I'm going to tilt it so that it will be straight up and down. And I think we got that. Um, could probably tilt it back. A bit more. So, we're going to go like that. Is that lined up correctly? It doesn't quite look like it. Um, not like that. Yeah, okay. Um, close enough. I think that's pointing straight down. We'll start them up. Oh. <laughs> nope, it is pointing straight up. And this is why you check this stuff out. So, we'll start this deployed, and that'll probably be easier to figure out. There we go. Look at that. So there are our landing legs. They are just barely, barely touching the ground below this, um, this thing here, the rover. So... see if we could turn this even more down and then this let's see this is getting all messed up okay what if we turn off angle snap that might might help a bit I'm going to just start this over with this with these landing legs um, and we will figure this out let's start them deployed Oops. Undo. There we go. Deploy. Alright. Let's loop this around like this. Nope. Not like that. I have no freaking idea what is going on with these landing legs. Like, I don't understand why they don't snap to certain actual angles, but either way, we're going to just use shift to move them from now on. 
turn this around and point it down like that. All right. Um, that's still not terrific, but either way, you get the basic idea. Um, and what we could do is maybe just even move this down a bit more. That would probably be easier. Okay, so there we go. That has been moved down a bit. Uh, we didn't have angle snap on. We're going to want that. All right, so that's moved down. Now we have a little bit of room to work with. And we got to make sure we add a docking port and, importantly, a satellite pod up to the top of this. So you want to have everything you need on your space crane as well. So SAS, um, batteries, and stuff like that. I always try to put it all on the space crane uh, segment as well because then you can control that without anything docked to it. So each of these should be their own separate ship. Um, if I could remember what I'm actually looking for now. Oh yeah, batteries, which are under here. There we go. Okay, so that is that. And here we see the space crane in action. Basic rover with crane. All right, so let's save. And let's try and launch this and just see how these landing legs hold up, even with Kerbin's gravity, uh, which is not uh, really a good comparison for Minmus. But if it holds up on Kerbin, it should hold up on Minmus, because the gravity is very weak. Okay, so that's not too bad. Now we turn on our SAS, fire up the engines, and you can see the space crane in action. I, you would obviously be coming down from orbit and such, rather than just on the launch pad, but what you do is you just try and slow yourself and bring down for a nice easy landing. That was not an easy landing because the launch pad exploded, but you get the idea. Um, if you don't land on something that is easily explodable, like our launch pad there, uh, you would have better results. On Minmus, that won't happen. So that is basically how the space crane works, and now what I'm going to do is just go and build the same asparagus staging uh, heavy launcher that I built in a previous episode, and we're just going to dock it, obviously, to the bottom docking port there. So this is our little rover. We are going to be able to launch it up into space, put it down on Minmus, and hopefully send some crew over there to play around on it and have fun. So that is that. I will go add the heavy launcher right now and then we'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back and I've added a different heavy launcher using these bigger things, but it's the same asparagus staging. It's just larger tanks, larger engines, and there's only four of them, so it's a less, less staging uh, that we have to deal with. But the other thing that I've done is I've gone and I've added RCS and aerodynamic stuff to the top of this space crane, uh, which you're definitely going to want. So, uh, make sure you have your aerodynamic stuff. You're going to want RCS on the space crane because the beautiful thing about a space crane is next time you launch a rover, you won't have to launch another space crane. You can just leave this out in orbit around Minmus, uh, refuel it, and then uh, use it to land everything that you bring out to Minmus from here on out. So, here we go. Uh, I haven't tested this at all. Let's hope it works. Make sure before you launch this that you strut the heck out of everything keep it all together, and all of that good stuff. Uh, but the thing is, since this is a tutorial about space cranes, I am not going to show you the same launch and all of that stuff and spend 10 minutes doing that. I'm just going to skip ahead now until we are in orbit around Minmus. I suppose I should mention probably pretty quick how to get to Minmus. So, what we're going to do is we're going to warp ahead until Minmus is right about here. You can see you can line up where its orbit will match up with yours, and it's going this way. So that is when you want to launch, is when it's approximately over there, somewhere in this general area, um, and then we're going to launch, we'll just burn, uh, we'll get a stable orbit around Kerbin, burn, prograde out, and extend to meet up somewhere over here, near where our orbits uh, should cross, like where the orbit with the moon is level, where that crosses with Minmus's orbit, that is where you want to 
uh, aim for your meetup. But uh, that is that, and that is how you get to Minmus. So let's get out there. And one more thing to do before launch that I should mention and I forgot myself is we need crew for this. Whoops, I don't want to click on that. We need crew. So go to utility and get yourself one of these hitchhiker storage containers. Plop it on there, and there you go. You can strut it up for some structural integrity and all of that good stuff. So we'll take the four struts, connect it down to there. This will be undocked. Uh, once we get up into space, we'll put our Kerbals on um, on the seats, and then we can undock this. But for launch, that is where they will sit. So we'll fill it with our four new recruits here. We have a one of at least everything. We have two engineers. So that is going to be good. We will save, and now we're ready to launch. Okay, so here we are up in a stable orbit around Minmus. Uh, a few things I should mention while flying this craft. If uh, you're having problems with this tank running out of fuel, you want to make sure that you uh, disable crossfeed. I have it disabled already, which is why the option says enable. But it'll say disable. Make sure you disable that, because otherwise all the fuel from this tank will be used up by this engine. Uh, if you need to. Hopefully you won't need all the fuel to get out to Minmus and you can just refill it at that point. You would do that by right clicking one of the tanks, holding alt, right clicking the other, and then you can transfer fuel. I've already uh, made sure that it's all full and everything like that so we don't have to worry. So now what we can do is we can get ready to transfer our crew members from out of here. We will move them all over to their command seats using EVA. So, let's get our first Kerbal ready to go and ride the rover and then once we get them all set up on their rover seats we will detach this and the space crane and get uh, ready to land. Okay, there they are, all four of them seated in their appropriate spots. So now we are sure we are all fueled up so we can decouple from there. We have all of our crew so we can decouple there. And then we have to reactivate these engines because I have uh, on the flight here I deactivated them. I had to activate them for a little bit to help with stability. I did not have enough struts. If you're having problems with stability make sure there are struts connecting this big tank here to like these outer tanks and from here up to like the main body because that was causing me some issues so hopefully you can avoid that for yourself uh, and so we'll activate the last engine make sure all four are active which is good we will use RCS to kind of bump these other things and get the heck out of here alright so we want to make sure we are controlled from there and let's throttle up just a bit and then kill it and then slow ourselves down with RCS and holding N and there we go we are free and separated from the other pieces of our craft so now what we need to do basically is uh, warp around to the daylight side of Minmus. So, um, oh, we we have a maneuver that we can get rid of. Let's warp around to here. There we go. And yeah, this is our little space crane. We can de uh, deploy the landing legs there, and we are good on pretty much everything that we need. So let's just turn to face retrograde here there we go just like that and let's time warp over until we see an appropriate landing spot on the surface of Minmus you could use a maneuver node for this I'm not gonna I'm just gonna do it by eye here and actually you know what I did put down uh, I didn't record this because I was just testing stuff, but I put down a mining probe thing right there. That's that little purple dot there. We could try land near there, sort of. 
not directly on it, but near it. So, there we go. Slow ourselves down, and we'll take a look and watch what this will do to our orbit as we burn retrograde here. And we want it to look pretty much like that. Um, let's do a bit of a maneuver here. Yeah, alright. We'll want to come in just south of the uh, landing thing. So let's let's do that. There we go. Okay. So our crew is ready. Our rover is ready. Let's hope this all works as I think it will. And we can get down onto the surface of Minmus and chill out. I'm just going to quick save here just in case I botch this landing like horribly for some reason. So, there we go. We are quick saved. We are ready to go. And we gotta make sure that Minmus does not orbit out from underneath us as we try to come and land on this flat area. So, slow ourselves down there and then turn to face retrograde again. Well, not that way. Here we go this way, and then warp on down to near the ground at least. Okay, now the easy thing about Minmus is the gravity is so low that we are going very, very slow, and it does not take very long at all to slow yourselves down with these swivel engines. So that is why they make good space crane uh, engines. So you can see we can warp down real low to the surface, just fire up the engines pretty much all the way. Let ourselves drop down even more. The one thing I didn't add, I suppose that you could add to your space crane, is uh, lights if you were going to do night landings and things like that, but I knew we'd be landing during the day, so I didn't think about it really too much. Um, but yeah, lights on a space crane are also always a useful thing to have. Okay, so, we are getting ready here, and we're going to bring it down nice and easy, and we can drop it off. We are a few hundred meters above the surface now. You can see our shadow coming in. Just slow ourselves ever so gently down to the surface. A few hundred meters up now. Coming in a little under 10 meters per second and slowing. Not too bad. This is going to be a pretty easy landing as Minmus landings usually are. As long as I don't just, like, press a wrong button or something horrible like that. So, we are going to drop this thing down now. Close down, under 100 meters. Our shadow is there. Slow ourselves ever so gently. There we go. And a nice calm touchdown in any second. <laughs> Here we go. The final touchdown. And there we have it. We can kill our engines. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a space crane in action dropping a rover down onto Minmus. So, Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open up the service bay real quick. I'm going to refuel these monopropellant tanks. Even though we did not use a whole lot, we still want to do it. Now, the important thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to refuel them from opposite sides. Uh, you need to use the exact opposite side on your tower because otherwise you're going to be uneven. And uh, even though it's only going to throw you off by a little bit, it will throw you off. So, 
make sure to refuel uh, if you do this from opposite corner tanks. So there we go. We are ready to decouple that. It drops down gently with no um, worry about anything. Oh, hello there. All right, we should close this. And now use our RCS, and if we hit H here, you can see it will actually propel us forward. And let's see, what what is the button that would get us to go up? Well, we can do this. You can lean back and hit H, and this thing will actually begin to take off, hopefully. There we go. We may need to build up a bit more speed first. And what if we control from here, actually? That might be... Yeah, there we go. That'll solve our problem. That will make H work for us. So, if you control from the top, H will lift you up. Uh, w, A, S, and D will control you. Uh, and then you hit... Let's see. What buttons to go forward? Well, basically, uh, you can turn off your RCS. You can build up your speed. Oh, yeah, you might want to turn off your SAS, too. That's probably throwing us off. Or maybe you do want that on. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, either way, it's not amazing for actually driving specifically on Minmus. Like, just driving this thing around because it is so, so light. But, um, you could dock things to the top of it. But either way, whoa, hello. And there's our first issue. So, we survived though. We're going to, going to survive this. There we go. And uh, the thing about this, basically, is that the RCS is very, very strong, and it doesn't uh, doesn't use a ton of RCS fuel to just be spinning around and having fun up here. So uh, that is why building RCS-controlled Minmus rovers like this can be a lot of fun. And if you get them to be a bit heavier, they can be better to drive um, actually just driving around on Minmus rather than having to use things to fly around. So, let's see here. If you hit I, oh that's the button, okay. I will make you go forward then. So you hit control from the top and then you hit I to go forward like this. You can see K will slow your velocity down in reverse like this and then H lifts you up, N pushes you down, and there you go. Okay, so I finally remembered what the buttons were, and there is your flying rover. So, let's bring ourselves down for a nice, gentle landing here. I realized I didn't put ladders on this thing, but on Minmus you don't need it. So basically, what you want to do is you just keep your velocity going forward, and you can get yourself up to screaming speeds, and uh, just by holding I and using your RCS. And the more RCS you put on this thing, the longer you can fuel it up. And uh, you can't actually, you know, build things to refuel this. You just have to have anything that can dock to it. You could add docking ports to the side of this thing, too, like right there and right there, uh, like opposite sides of each other. That would be a potential good addition if you want to have a more permanent rover. Uh, and if you're setting up like a permanent Minmus base. But alright, you can see we're going pretty fast now, and then we hold H, and we have taken off, and we are just flying basically above the surface of Minmus. So we'll hold H for a bit, and we'll turn off our RCS, and look at us go! Woo! We are flying! And it is great. Um, these things, yeah, they're pretty nice pretty nice for a good little rover so hopefully you guys enjoyed it and are now rovering your way across Minmus' surface with your half flying half wheeled rover and hopefully this has inspired ideas for many other rover designs and things like that that is what i'm here to do give you basic simple ideas and hopefully uh teach you enough to uh build your own and try and tweak these designs and things like that so hopefully I have done that job, and hopefully uh, you have learned a little something and enjoyed this video, and hopefully I will see you next time. Bye-bye.